Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we've got a nice little animation for you today. We've got a little call to action module here. And as you can see, we've got a button on there that's constantly changing color. And that's gonna get people's attention really quickly. Really nice little feature, really easy to do. We've got to do a little bit of coding for this today, but don't let the coding put you off. Any code I write, as usual, I'll put below the video. You're welcome to copy and paste it. Use it how you wish. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Okay, and once loaded, I'm going to go down. I've got a section here, little blue tab. Inside, I've got a row with three columns in it, green tab for the row, and dark tab for the actual module itself. I'm going to delete this, and we'll start from scratch. OK, I'm going to hit the little dark button to add a new module. Divi comes as standard with all these modules, plenty enough to build just about any site. The blue ones are from Supreme Modules, which is a great little plugin, but we're not using that today. I'm going to use a call to action module because it's got a little button on it. There we are. And let's just do a bit of styling. I'm going to leave the title and the content just as it is because I have no real content for it. Obviously, put what you want your button to say right there. You may have noticed you can't see a button at the moment. That won't show up until we put a link in. Down below, we got the text field here, and it's like any other text field. You can bold, italicize, align, make headings, or add media if you want to. Down below that, we've got the link. This is where you put the link in for your button. I'll put a hashtag in for a placeholder. As soon as I put something in there, you'll see that button show up. There it is right there, fantastic. Okay, always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site to somebody else's, open it in a new tab, that way your site will stay open. Okay, well, let's make that background a little more interesting. I'm just gonna put a quick gradient on there. I'm gonna leave that generic blue at the top and let's just put a black in at the bottom perhaps. That's fine, I'm not gonna spend too much time styling this. Now let's go over to our design and I'm just going to give it a little box shadow on the bottom just to lift it off of the page. Okay, well let's go around and start styling our button. We could go in here and do a bit of styling but I don't really need to do that because I'm going to code it. So to make this happen we need to go over to our advanced, to our CSS IDs and classes. This is how we're going to give this a name that we can identify it with and so we can add some code to it. So we'll go into CSS ID and classes. I'll use a class for this today. An ID would work, but we're going to go with a class. And let's say CTA for call to action, BTN for button. That's kind of my shorthand. You can call yours what you want. It wants to be unique. And I like my little class names to have some meaning. So that's kind of my shorthand for call to action button. That way, if I see it in the code, I'm going to sort of work out what it is. Great, so we've given it our CSS class and we've got everything we need there. I am going to turn off that icon. I don't think I want an icon on my button today. So let's go over to design button, custom styles for the button. We get rid of the border too. I don't want a border on there. I'm just going to have the writing and I don't want an icon. So I'm going to turn that off. Fantastic. Great. Well, let's save our changes now. We'll save our page changes and exit the Visual Builder. And to do this today, we're going to have to write a bit of custom code. To do that, we need to go down to our dashboard. Once your dashboard is loaded, go down to Appearance and then go down to Customize. If you click on Customize, it's going to bring us to this page here. I've actually set the page we're working on temporarily as my home page. You don't need to do that. I'm just doing it so we can see what's going on when I code. Once to this page, you need to go down to your additional CSS column. Here's the code that I wrote before. I'm going to delete that and we'll start from scratch. It's always a good idea to give your code a title. That way it's a lot easier to find, especially if somebody else is editing your site. So for a title, it's forward slash star star forward slash, anything that you write between the two stars there will not be read as code. So we'll say button color change. Okay, got our little title. 
We gave that a little class name, a CTA BTN, call to action button, shorthand, CTA BTN. But we're actually looking to just affect the button. We don't want to affect this whole thing. So the button is actually an A. If I inspect it with my Chrome inspector here, you'll see that it's an anchor tag, like most links. There we are. You see the little A there? That means it's an anchor tag. So if I target CTA button A, it'll just target the button right there. Okay, so I'm just going to put CTBTN A to target the anchor tag. Now I want to open and close some curly brackets here and decide what we want to do with it. Well, we're going to create a little animation for this today. So I'm going to say animation, colon, and we want to give it a name. Let's give it a name of color changing button, CCBTN, another one of my shorthands. That's the animation name. And I want it to last, say, 10 seconds. We can always change this if it's too quick or too slow for you, 10S. I don't want it to keep going and going and going. So I'm going to say 10 seconds, 10S. And I want it to be infinite. In other words, not stop. OK, great. Now we've got to actually create this animation using keyframes. So if we drop down a couple more, I'm going to say at keyframes. And then the name that we gave it was CCBTN. Now we can open, close some more curly brackets and actually add the keyframes to animate this thing. Well, I'm going to start off at 0%, or basically when the page loads, or second one of our 10 seconds up here. So I'm going to say 0%, open and close some more curly brackets. At 0%, I just want to have, let's start off perhaps with a red background. So I'm going to say background, colon. Use any colors you want. I'm just using random colors here. As you can see, it's put a red background in there. And every 10 seconds, just because I put one value in there, it's putting the red in and then it's fading it out over 10 seconds. So I'm going to copy this, say, four times and we'll do some color changes. So we've got Control C to copy, I'm going to drop down, Control V to paste, making sure we're not cutting off that curly bracket at the bottom there that the whole thing's wrapped in. So let's do two, three, four. Now just space those out a little bit. And let's say at 33% or a third of the way through. Let's change that to perhaps blue. And like I say, use whatever colors you want. You can use hex colors or RGBAs, whatever you want. And at 66%, let's make it maybe purple. And then at 100%, we want it to be back to our red again. That way it'll be nice and smooth going from red to red. As you can see, it's already started changing down there. And there's our little hover color. Now obviously put as many in as you want. It's got to start at zero and end at 100. But the amount of keyframes you actually put in there is entirely up to you. And the more you put in, the more smooth the effect will be. But that kind of works well for me for this situation. So once you're happy with everything that's going on there, hit the publish up here to actually publish your code. And that's it. Now if we go back to our page and refresh, we'll have that animated color button there. And there we have it. And like I say, that's going to get people's attention pretty quick, which is what you want with a website. And to duplicate this, once you've done the initial code, it's really easy. Let's just duplicate this to show you how easy it actually is. Let's enable the Visual Builder again. And go down, let's just add a new call to action. Obviously you need to put a button in there. Again, put your link in, different link obviously, or the same link if you want to take them to the same place. There's the button. I'm not going to bother styling the background. To make this have the actual color change button, the same as we've got next door, all we need to do is go over to our advanced go to our CSS IDs and classes and give it that same class, which was CTA BTN. And as you can see, that little button's started glowing in there. If you want it to be exactly the same, we just need to take that border off. Just 
take that border off. And there we go. And obviously take the icon off if you don't want an icon on there. Very easy to do. If you wanted the border to actually not be there and have skip this step, let's just say that, you could just go back to your code here. And you could add border none. Semicolon. And then just copy that. That way, let's just publish that. That way, the next time that you decided to create a box, you wouldn't have to get rid of that border there. And if we go back to the page here, add a quick another call to action quickly. Add a button by giving it a link. And give it that class CTA BTN. And there we have, we've got no border, we've got that little color changing effect going. Really easy to do. So there you go guys, there's how to add a little color changing animation to your buttons on your call to action. Really easy to do and that is a very eye catching effect. And there we go, now we've exited the visual builder, they're all in sync. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.